massive call for more gun control. Even CBS and MSNBC had to admit that California already has the strictest gun laws in the country. California has the strictest gun laws in the U.S. California is doing everything that anybody who is looking for tough gun restrictions to exist, uh, they're doing it all right now. But Gavin was having none of that. With a bizarre Jack Nicholson-like smile and laugh effect, he looked like he was going for the Oscar. You claim to care about your kids? We were just talking the number one killer. Number one killer of our kids last year was guns. The hell's wrong with us? I'm not saying take everybody's guns and stop that, the extreme, back and forth. Some damn common sense, common dignity. Kids being traumatized over and over again because of these damn drills at school for shooters and we're not dealing with the damn issue? What a creep. Now, it turned out that a deranged elderly Asian man with a criminal history, including unlawful possession of a firearm, was the gunman in that horrific shooting that killed 11 on Sunday in Monterey Park during, during a Lunar New Year celebration. And as for that rampage in Half Moon Bay, that's about 30 miles south of San Fran, the suspect in custody is another senior citizen, a 66-year-old Asian man. Now, the people killed mostly worked on a mushroom farm, which locals said was known to be a marijuana growing farm. The suspect was subject to a temporary restraining order after a former co-worker and roommate accused him of attacking and threatening him back in 2013. So there's no evidence that racial bias was a motivating factor. But again, facts don't matter. Not when your goal is to score political points. There's demagoguing instead. And then there's demagavin. Where's the Republican Party been on gun safety reform? They blocked it every step of the way. One state can't do it alone. Shame on them. And shame on those that allow and perpetuate that to be rewarded politically. Shame on them. Shame on these judges. You deserve better. We deserve better. Ending the epidemic of gun violence requires doing what Newsom refuses to do. Send an unequivocal message that there will be no tolerance for crime of any kind in the state. But after decades of liberal leadership, criminals here in California know how easy it is to get away with illegal drug sales, car theft, shoplifting, vandalizing, of course, larceny of any kind, and we know far worse. That has to end. This isn't that hard. End the demonizing of law enforcement. Stop supporting and defending pro-criminal prosecutors who are part of the problem. End the sanctuary city policies that have empowered the cartels and the gangs throughout the state. Gun control doesn't stop criminals hell-bent on committing crimes. Just ask the people of Illinois. Laying on the couch right here, I heard maybe anywhere between six to eight shots. Uh, looked, sounded like it was right up under the window. It's Chicago. I don't think I'm surprised anymore when it comes to, like, gunshots happening anywhere. It is not surprising me. Now, beyond the crime epidemic, California has huge problems. A $25 billion budget shortfall. The cities are unsafe, deteriorating from the needless COVID lockdowns and, as we know here in L.A., rampant homelessness. Public schools are in decline. Everyone's trying to find a way out. A pension system that is in crisis, and I mean big crisis. So climate change insanity, rampant crime, high taxes running the state into the ground, all of it. But at least the Democrats can brag about leading the nation with their legalized weed industry. Now, even the LA Times had to admit a few months ago, we brought it to you at the time, that legal marijuana has also spawned outlaw growths, and with them, violence, shootouts, robberies, kidnappings, and occasionally, as the Times wrote, killings. Muchas gracias, Gavin. No wonder 300,000 residents are leaving California every year for places like Texas and Nevada. So despite his resounding reelection, Newsom's in a bind. So what's the escape for him? A run for the presidency, of course. Well, look closely. You can see his wings. Because Newsom is one of the buzzards circling President Biden for 2024. And that means he's got to show his talons. 
You have one party that are obstructionists. You have a leader of that party from the state of California hasn't said a damn word about these mass atrocities. Unless there's a pattern interrupt and we start calling people out by name, all those people on Fox primetime. Really? Crime's your number one issue? You're not going to deal with the leading cause of crime, which is guns? And you still think people should have large capacity magazine clips and weapons of damn war? What frauds? Absolute frauds. Gaslighting a cable network instead of his own shortcomings. That's going to keep people about as safe as what Gavin's goons did by chasing people off the beaches and out of parks during COVID. That worked well. Now, Newsom may have a sharper mental acuity than Biden, but his policies are just as demented. And the voters aren't having it. And that's the angle. Our next guest has been watching his community in Central California change for decades as food farms have become drug farms. Victor Davis Hansen is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, and he joins me now. All right, Victor, I'm down here in L.A. You're up north in the Central Valley. But the legal weed industry, it's booming in the state. But so are the other types of grows, which are illegal. Now, the farm in Half Moon, where the shoot-up happened, apparently grew weed and mushrooms, and it was some workplace dispute, as we, we said. But what do you make of Newsom's attempt to piggyback on these two shootings, this tragedy, for 2024? He lives in an alternate uh, universe. When he blames Republicans, he's in charge of the state, Laura. There's not one single Republican statewide official. He has super Democratic majorities in both houses of the legislature. Out of the 53 congressional seats, I think only 11 or 12 are Republican. It's his state. It was Dianne Feinstein, Nancy Pelosi, Jerry Brown, Barbara Boxer, Gavin Newsom. They all come out of the same wealthy Bay Area elite that are never subject to the consequences of their own ideology. So he's a performance art governor. So if there's a flood and he didn't build reservoirs, which the voters voted for, then he talks about climate change. When there's shootings, he talks about gun control. There's shootings right near where I live. Six people were murdered in Goshen right down the road from me, but he, and they were not MAGA people. They were probably cartels doing a hit. And yet he didn't come down there and talk about illegal immigration. When he talks about death in California, he should look at the 99 freeway I-5 are the most dangerous freeways in the country. They're ossified. They're about 1950 status when there were 15 million rather than 40 million people. And people are dying every day while he pursues this unicorn of high-speed rail that's Stonehenge. It's just unfinished. It'll never be finished. $15 billion. So he always will get an issue. Abortion, come to California. We'll help you get an abortion on demand. Uh, COVID will give you $500 million of COVID relief. High gas prices, because we, we restrict oil and gas, we'll give you money out of the Treasury to soften our $6, $7 a gallon gas. But as you said, he, he managed, and his predecessors like him have managed to have the highest basket of sales, gas, and income tax in the nation. The schools are in the bottom 10%. The infrastructure is rated in the top bottom 10%. One third of all welfare recipients live in California. 20% of the state lives below the poverty line. 27% well, so of the state was not born in the United States. It's Victor, a mess. Victor, when will California decide to save itself? I mean, how much suffering does this beautiful state have to go through to make a change? Well, what's happened I say that about my hometown in Hartford, Connecticut as well. The people who could save the state have given up. So 300,000 people are moving to Florida. 1% of the population pays half of the income tax. So the state's not going to get better. It's getting worse. But for people from poor countries, California is paradise compared to Venezuela or Nicaragua or southern Mexico, and they're welcomed in. And so we have, on one hand, big tech and big money, almost like a medieval castle around Silicon Valley. And then we have people leaving that was the old entrepreneurial upper middle and middle classes. And then we have, They're out. Uh, we're importing very poor people who feel California, as bad as it is, is much bad, better than where they were born. Yeah. Well, and let's nobody just remind everybody. And, yeah, uh, so we're going to have the super rich, sad. super rich, the poor, and an in increasingly small middle class. That's a recipe for disaster. Republicans yeah. and conservatives can never give up 
on California. No way. California has to come back, and we can't give up on it. Victor, thank you.